What's going on internet, IG here again today. And today we are in part two of the best of series. Today we're looking at the best web browser. So like I mentioned before at the start of the last video, this series is all about finding the best applications for your new Linux desktop and comparing them to some of the other ones that are also really good. It's tough decisions to make, so these are based on entirely my own opinions and my own experiences, yours are going to vary. This is what I've found after running a Linux desktop as a primary for the last, oh goodness, four or five years or so. So the best web browser, let's get down to it. Okay, so let's start with the minimal web browsers. These are the ones that are lightweight, you're gonna to wanna to install on a lighter weight computer. However, they do strip out some features, so let's take a look at what these lightweight picks are. First of all, we have Quapzilla. I'm not exactly sure how you say it, but Quapzilla is a lightweight, pretty bare bones browser that still gives you the same sort of functionality that, uh, that legacy versions of Firefox would give you. Uh, you do have the option to use some extensions here. They're not amazing in terms of uh, functionality and the, the range of extensions that are available, but you basically get a pretty Firefox-ish sort of layout. You get uh, a web browser that is based off WebKit and Adblock Plus is integrated from default, which is nice to see. It is also very respectful of the overall theming of your desktop. So if you are a GTK based desktop, it will look pretty much at home and the same can be said for any QT based desktop you might be running as well. In terms of overall responsiveness, this web browser is pretty decent. As you can see here, when we load up a more content heavy web page, such as The Verge, you can see that it renders it pretty decently. Not only does it render it decently, but it renders it pretty quickly. There is a few dropped frames there in the scrolling, but as you can see overall, it's, pretty, it's a pretty smooth affair. In terms of web standard compatibility, we have the 97 out of 100 with the ACID3 test, testing CSS rendering, HTML rendering, and JavaScript rendering. We also have the SunSpider test coming through in 223.5 milliseconds. We have 336 out of a possible 555 for HTML5. So those are some ideas of some numbers that you can throw around with. Like I said, very lightweight browser, so it's gonna take care of your RAM usage. It certainly does the basics of a web browser quite well, and it does it relatively quickly and more importantly, lightweight, but it doesn't have the same sort of features to let this one off the hook entirely. So we move on, on to the second lightweight contender, and that is Midori. Now, Midori web browser is one that I've been watching for quite some time. It is a very good looking browser, depending on what desktop environment you're using it. And also you do obviously have massive compatibility in terms of web standards. It does pass 356 out of a possible 555 from HTML5, does get 100 out of 100 from ACID3, and also it does do a little bit better there in the SunSpider benchmark uh, with 205.9 milliseconds for the benchmarking results. Now you can get this particular web browser on nearly any distribution you choose. It does look better on some than others, but I suppose the thing that I like most about this distribution is just how quick it is and how cleanly it renders things no matter which desktop you're on. When it comes to font smoothing, when it comes to everything being where it's supposed to be, Midori brings it time after time. It is a little bit sloppier in performance than the Quapzilla browser, but in terms of a lightweight web browser that both looks nice and performs well, and is more standards compliant, then Midori is definitely going to be the one to choose. Moving on to the heavyweights, we have Vivaldi. Now, I did, a, I did a video on Vivaldi itself, as it is the new incarnation of what Opera Web Browser is. I was gonna look at Opera Web Browser, but to be honest, Vivaldi kind of picks up where Opera left off. In terms of web standard compatibility, we are looking at a pretty decent web browser here. You've got 100 out of 100 for ACID3, and you have 516 out of a possible 555 points. Now, obviously this web browser does include quite a few features, including a email client and other such stuff coming to it very, very soon. But I wouldn't give this one the thumbs up yet just because it's early in development. So I can't quite crown it the winner, although I'd really like to from a look and feel point of view and from a compatibility and web standards point of view. In terms of performance, it's a bit of a slouch in JavaScript with 306.4 milliseconds clocking in compared to almost 100 less with Midori. But in terms of a web browser that works well with extra features added on the top without sacrificing too much performance, that's what Vivaldi is all about. Moving on to the second from the top spot, we look at Chrome or Chromium, depending on what you prefer. Now, Chrome and Chromium have been my go-to web browsers for quite some time now. 
and the only reason this one doesn't get the top spot is basically performance. Chrome nowadays is quite a big web browser and at the moment for the version number relevance we are sitting at version 41 and I am using the actual Google Chrome web browser for these tests. You can obviously compare it with Chromium as well. Usually Chromium, at least in the stable build, is a little bit behind uh, what Google Chrome, the proprietary browser, is doing. But they're very similar in their code base. In terms of the ACID 3 test, it only passed 98 out of 100, uh, which is not a great score for especially such a widespread web browser. And also the SunSpider JavaScript benchmark results were a little bit slouchy uh, with 245.1 milliseconds there. Uh, in terms of HTML5 compatibility, you've got plenty there. Uh, it probably passes one of the, it probably gives one of the higher scores for HTML5 compatibility. Um, up there with Vivaldi and the rest of them. But performance wise, I tend to say that uh, Chrome and Chromium are a little bit of a memory hog nowadays. There is a lot of processes that run in the background. And while this is a good thing from killing processes, I think Chrome could do with trimming some fat and getting some performance back. That leaves us with our number one spot going to Firefox. Nowadays we're up to version 37 of Firefox and while I do bemoan the version numbers of Firefox since Firefox 4, the performance is definitely taken a leap and bound ahead of what Firefox used to be. Uh, it's very customizable, gives you all the features you could possibly want, remains open source, respectful to the standards of the interwebs in terms of privacy, and also doesn't do too badly in benchmarks either. 227.8 milliseconds in the SunSpider JavaScript benchmark. We get 448 out of a possible 555 from HTML5, and we get 100 out of 100 from the ACID3 test. So in terms of finding the perfect balance between expandability, extensions, performance, and web compatibility, Firefox at version 37, as the, as the time of the recording of this video, takes the cake. And uh, that's definitely the web browser that I recommend for everyone to go and install on their new Linux distribution. Funnily enough, it, most of the time it does come as default, and I guess there's a reason for that. But Firefox have shown, and Mozilla as a company have shown that they're dedicated to building an open web that is fast and it does everything that you want it to, and I think they deserve a lot of props for that. So what did you think of the best web browser? Do you agree? Let me know in the comments down below. And if, as always, if I have left out one that you thought was definitely worth a mention, then definitely let me know in the comments below. And uh, we might see if we might do like an, uh, like an audience compilation one, where all the suggestions that I get from you guys, we turn it into another video that I discuss those. Uh, but yeah, definitely let me know in the comments below. Stick around for the next episode coming your way soon. We're going to be having a look at the best instant messaging clients for staying connected on the interwebs. That'll be all from me this time, guys. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus if you want to keep up to date with everything that I'm doing. And as always, subscribe if you like what you see here and you want to see more. I'll catch you next time in the next video.